Every one of us has a certain skill level. However, in this video I'm going to show you, regardless of your level, how you can play your best possible pool in matches. When I'm watching matches of pro players, I often hear the commentators say things like he's playing the right shots. Well, does that mean that if you were in the exact same situation that you should have played the same shots? No, it doesn't, because you have a different skill level. And very often players are trying to play the exact same shots that they are used to see from watching a lot of pro players. And this very often leads to horrible results because the shots are way too hard to execute. And if you are doing this, you will lose a lot of control because you are playing low percentage shots where you aren't sure about the outcome. That's why in this lesson I'm going to show you how to find and pick the right shots depending on your personal skill level. And I guarantee this will lead to much better results and win you way more matches. For this lesson I'm going to play one rack of 9-ball, but of course this works with every game you're playing. And the main topic we're going to talk about in this video are shot selection and probabilities. So it's very important to have a realistic self-assessment and to know how good you are at certain shots. Okay, I'm going to break this rack now and then we will see how the break develops, what kind of shots I'm playing and why I'm playing certain shots. This looks like a really nice break, we got a little lucky with the 8 ball and here we have a very nice layout, we made one ball at the break and can try to run this rack. So here is the first shot, the 1 ball. Well, from the 1 to the 3 we basically have two options, we could either follow with right and English or play a stun shot to go just one rail towards the 3 ball. And here is the first big decision we have to make and for that we have to know our probabilities. And this depends on you now, how good are you with that follow with right hand English shot or as you see here, um, it's not that much of an angle how well you can execute that stun shot just one rail. I personally have a much higher chance if I follow the ball with right hand English because with that stun shot I just have to pound the ball. And I think most of you should make the same decision here because the stun shot is very tough as you saw from the angle. Okay, we got a very nice position on the free ball and here is the next big decision we have to make. Because we basically have two options. The first option is to draw the cue ball all the way back as you see here to have the full ball into the side pocket or the second option of course is to just go over and play the four ball into the corner pocket. It depends on where the five ball is because as you see from the four to the five the five ball is blocked by the eight. So I have to decide do I want to try to get that pinpoint position on the four ball into the corner pocket where I just can draw the cue ball back. Or go I for the longer shot where I have to draw the cue ball more up table but where I have more margin for error regarding the angle on the 4 ball. And of course this again should be obviously we have to try to get the 4 ball into the side pocket because this is much easier and not that much dependent on the skill level. But you will see how the whole thing develops and we are going deeper into probabilities and which shot you are going to choose. But first we are going to look how I get position on that 4 ball. And as you saw, I overdrew the cue ball by a mile because I wanted to make sure to have the right angle and you see the outcome, which is not the worst in the world, but also not perfect. You see, I wanted to be here. And now we have to decide. The four ball obviously goes into the side pocket, but also into the corner pocket. And here it's important to evaluate the situation. When we are playing the four ball into the side pocket, we can get easier position on the five ball. So we increase our probabilities of having a nice shot on the five ball. However, the cut on the four ball into the side pocket is way more difficult than to play it into the corner pocket. So we lose the probability of actually making the ball. And in my opinion, making the ball is always more important to getting position because if you're trying to make the four ball into the side pocket and we missed, we maybe sell out and lose the whole rack. If you're going for the corner pocket, make the four ball and don't get a nice position, we can always play safe. 
So we want to have control over the rack. We don't want to miss because then we lose control. And that's why I'm deciding to play the four ball into the corner pocket, even though if the position on the five ball is a bit tougher and you see the angle leads a bit into the five ball. So I have to stun follow the ball, which makes the whole thing a bit more difficult, but still making it into the corner pocket is much easier here. And as you saw, we ran into the 5 ball, but nevertheless, I'm still in control. I didn't miss the 4 ball into the side pocket, and I can now play a safety shot. So as you see, from the angle we have on the 5 ball, we basically have 2 or maybe 3 options. The first option is to just play it straight, try to get the snooker behind the 7 and the 9 ball, and just leave the cue ball where it is. But the problem here is that I have to play it very soft, so that the cue ball um, doesn't leak out behind the 9 and that the 5 ball doesn't travel too much. So this is the first option which is a bit dangerous. The second option we have is to just hit it thin, just send the 5 ball towards the short rail, bring the cue ball towards the long rail and try to get the snooker behind the 5 ball. And now you have to evaluate how are your chances to get the first shot right or the second shot right. I'm deciding here to play the first shot to show you what happens. Here would be the perfect spot if the cue ball would have stopped here, but unfortunately it didn't stop of course. And as you see the 5 ball leaks out and we basically sold out. So this was the wrong shot selection. I had in my mind, I'm not sure if I can execute this shot, but I'm still going to try it even though my chances were very low because this was um, just speed control and I just couldn't feel the shot so I should have changed my mind and played another shot. That's why we're setting the whole thing up again, I'm trying to remember where the balls were and then we're trying to play the second shot. My thought process here was with the first shot that I chose, if I get the snooker I will leave a very tough kick shot for my opponent. But the chances to get that shot right were just too low for me in this situation. And as you see here, I left my opponent a few on the 5 ball, but he can't make the 5 ball. So yes, he is still in a position where he can do something, but on the previous shot I sold out totally because he could make the ball and run from here. Here the only thing he has is a safety shot. Well, of course, he also has the bank shot. But here it comes again to probabilities. How probable is it to actually make that bank shot into the side pocket with a position on the 6 ball and how well is everything controlled? So here definitely your chances are very low so you have to decide for the safety shot. And as you see this safety shot is definitely on. I'm just trying to get the cue ball behind the 8 ball so I have to concentrate on the cue ball here to not sell out. But these are the highest chances I have, so this is the best possible shot that I can play. And as you see, we got a very nice safety on the 5 ball and are now in a good position. Okay, you want to hit that 5 ball. You basically have three options that you can do. The first option is to play the two rail kick shot. That means going into the short rail, long rail, hit the five and try to make a full contact to separate the balls. But how high are your chances for that shot? I would say my chances are to actually hit that shot probably five to six out of ten because it's not the easiest kick shot in the world. So I'm not 100% sure if I should play the shot. The second choice that I have is the one rail kick shot, which is in my opinion more difficult and again the outcome is way more difficult to predict, so I give myself also around 5 to 6. And there is still the jump shot and I'm usually pretty good at jumping and I can assure that I will make a contact with the 5 ball at least 9 out of 10 times. So my chances to make a foul with the jump shot are much smaller, so of course I'm deciding for the jump shot and I'm just trying to make the 5 ball into the side pocket here, because if I make the 5 it's totally fine and if I don't make the 5 maybe something good will also happen. 
It sounds a little weird, but sometimes if you're trying to make a ball, there's always a chance to have a good outcome for you um, if something goes wrong, so why not just trying to make the five ball? And you saw I hit a little too thin, but as you see, a bit harder and I would have left no shot for my opponent. So this was actually in my opinion the right shot selection, even though I left a shot on the five ball here. Okay, on the five ball, we have two chances basically. The first chances or the first option is to just play it straight without any English, try to get between the nine and the seven ball, which is very difficult. We are highly in danger to make contact with the nine and the seven, so this is very uncontrolled. The second choice is to play the whole shot with left hand English and go all around the angles and go probably between the 9 and the 7. Now this shot looks a lot more difficult, but actually my chances to execute that shot are much higher. Because first I'm playing with outside English and the outside English makes the shot for me easier. And the second reason why I'm choosing that shot is because my probabilities of having a nice shot on the 6 ball are much higher. Because if you're colliding from behind into the 7 or 9 ball, you have a high chance to still have a shot on the 6 ball. So here the chances are much higher to execute this shot successfully if you're playing this path. And as you see, almost the perfect outcome, we have a nice shot on the 6 ball. And now again, from the 6 to the 7, you have to make your choice. Are you trying to get towards the center of the table, where your chances are higher that you have a shot on the 7 ball, even though the shot on the 7 ball is much more difficult than if it was on this position here? Yes, of course, if the cue ball was here, the whole thing would be much more easier. But it's just too risky, my chances are just too low to get here to get that pinpoint position. I risk getting behind the 9 ball, that's why I definitely choosing here to get that center table position. Even though I have a more difficult shot and my chances to make the 7 ball are smaller. But if I compare those two probabilities, getting that pinpoint position and making the 7 ball compared to getting that center table position and making the 7 ball, my chances are higher if I'm going for that center position. And you see, I definitely have a makeable shot here. And again, we have to choose what are we going to do. Are we trying to hold the ball here at that point, which makes the position itself on the 8 ball a bit easier, but at the same time the shot on the 7 ball gets much more difficult. That's why I also have the option to go all around the angles. And in my opinion, this is the right choice because you don't have to baby that shot in. Um, the 7 ball is a much higher chance to drop and I just can let my stroke out. So here my chances are much higher that I get a nice result to make the 7. And the position on the 8 ball is basically natural. Yes, I'm going all around the angles, but this still is a very natural position. And as you see, we got a very nice position on the 8 ball and from here, it's very basic stuff. Just get the 2 rail position for the 9 and make the 9 ball. Okay, this was um, an interesting rack. I hope you understand the concept of probabilities now a lot better. And as I said in the beginning, you don't have to play every shot like I did here because it depends on you, on your skill level, on your probabilities. So always evaluate. How high are your chances to make a certain shot? Do you benefit that much from a certain shot if you're taking the more difficult shot, but in the end everything will be easier? Or is it just better to split the difficulties to have higher probabilities on both shots and so on? So this is really a huge thing, decision making, probabilities and shot selection.
Okay guys, this was really a lot of work that went into this lesson. I just spent another 15 hours in front of my computer, as you can probably see from my face. So um, if you want to give something back, if you enjoyed this lesson, if you've learned something new, please consider to first share it with your friends, comment, leave a thumbs up, yes. And uh, most important, if you haven't subscribed already, consider to subscribe to my channel because we are very close to 100,000 subscribers. And for my people or for my watchers, for my people, for my watchers, I'm really confused. Um, for the people who are already subscribed to my channel, hit that bell button because that way you get notified once I upload a new video. Okay, a huge thank you goes out to my sponsors, to my patrons and to everyone who's supporting me. And now I'm probably going to get some sleep, um, take some days off, spend some time at the pool table and then we're hopefully probably going to see you at the next lesson. So thanks for watching guys and as always, I just said it, see you at the next lesson. Take care. If you like this video, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something new, jeez, 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 just consider well, does that mean that if you were in the exact same situation, situation in the exact same situation, uh, no.